Grace be unto you and peace from our risen Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to the service of worship at First Presbyterian Church of Pasadena. You are welcome whether you are here with us in the sanctuary or worshiping with us through the live stream. Together we are the people of God. Together it is our privilege and our joy to worship God. Today we give thanks to Marilyn Wilkins for the beautiful flowers that are here at the front of the sanctuary. These flowers are given to the glory of God and in celebration of her daughter, Allison Wilkins McPhail. We thank you, Marilyn. There you are. I turned the wrong way. Thank you. Today we will be celebrating Holy Communion. So if you are here with us in the sanctuary, I hope you picked up one of the little uh, cups to uh, celebrate the sacrament with us. If not, um, you might raise your hand and we will make sure you get one. If you are at home, we hope that you will take a moment and find a piece of bread or a cracker and a sip of juice, something so that you can commune with us also, because we gather around this table to be fed from the hand of the Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing this sacrament is that we all can partake together. Friends, Brown Bag and Bible will meet this Wednesday. We will meet in the fellowship hall. At noon, you are encouraged to come, bring your Bible, bring a sack lunch if you would like to. We will begin a study of 2 Peter. This will be new for many folks. It's not an often studied book, but it's full of rich little gems that speak to our hearts and guide us in the way God would have us to go. So I hope you can join us at noon on Wednesday. We will be meeting every other week through the balance of the summer because of everybody's crazy schedules and things. And then after Labor Day, we'll resume with weekly meetings. So come and be with us as you are able to do so. Good news, the FPC Handbell Choir will be resuming its rehearsals starting two weeks from today. The bells are located in a new place right across, right that way, uh, on the first floor uh, in room eight. And even if you do not have previous experience as a ringer, we want you to come be a ringer with us. So uh, Jamie Taylor will be leading still, as she has in the past. We have some wonderful dedicated ringers, and there are more stands available for more folks to join in. So come and explore uh, the joy of handbell ringing, starting two weeks from today at 12, uh, I think it's at 12.15. That time may shift a little earlier. But, um, but across the hall in room eight for handbells. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I think we're ready to worship God.
stand in body or in spirit as we worship God. Come as you are to worship the Lord. Let us bring our songs, our prayers, and our worries. For the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. The Lord is our redeemer, and we shall be free. Please be seated. Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. However, we know that God is both just and merciful. We know that we can trust God to forgive us when we bow before God with penitent hearts. Therefore, in that spirit, let us now dare to confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. O Lord, you love us with our prayers and our songs. 
Forgive us when we do not love you with our actions. You call us to tend your sheep, to care for your people around the world, to share what we have, and to reflect your love. Forgive us when our love for you is shallow, when our love for our neighbors is empty, and when our love for ourselves is hard to find. Forgive us for the ways we fall short. By your forgiveness, free us to try again. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Amen. Friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ reigns in power and Christ prays for us. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Accept God's forgiveness and know God's peace. Amen.
Please be seated. Friends, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, by your spirit, come down to us. Come down into this moment when we hear your word read and proclaim and fill us with a passion to live out your word. Help us to hear these words with new understanding and help us to take them from this place and into your world, the world that you created and you love. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Let us hear together this word of God to us. So then, remember that at one time you, Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it, it's right there. It's in black and white. It was up on the big screen. Christ Jesus is our peace. In him, we are joined together. In this year, 2021, in this time of turmoil in our state and in our nation and in the world, this scripture could not be more clear. Before us this morning is the unequivocal statement, Christ Jesus is our peace. In him, we are built together spiritually. In him, we become a dwelling place for God. Think of that. Now, elsewhere in Scripture, we are told that unless the Lord builds the house, then those who build it labor in vain. Friends, God has never let us down. God will never let us down. God always is faithful. We can count on God. But what about our efforts? How are we doing at being spiritually together? Are we living together as a dwelling worthy of God? And what do we allow to get us off track? 
What do we allow to distract us from what is most important, from what is life-giving? Why do we allow earthly things to tear us apart? Why do we ignore or corrupt the teachings of faith that we profess and go around tearing each other down? In the history of humankind, more wars have been fought on religious grounds than any other. Horrendous things have been done to our fellow members of the human race in the name of religion. Even in this morning's text, even this text that dates from the early days of Christianity, there's name calling. You are the circumcision. You are the uncircumcision. Now, students of history know that Romans threw the Christians to the lions, and they did so both to persecute them and for sport. The Crusades made the 11th through the 14th centuries one of the dark, dark times in shameful times in human history because Christians worked to expel and to exterminate Muslims from parts of Europe and Northern Africa. After that came the Protestant Reformation. And the man that we praise for lighting the final inextinguishable flame that became, the Protestant, that became Protestantism, Martin Luther, none other than the monk Martin Luther, maligned the Jewish people, and he contributed to the persecution of another Reformation splinter group known as the Anabaptists. We know what happened last century. We know that Nazi Germany put millions of people to death because of their religion. A contributing factor to the dysfunction in Iraq under Saddam Hussein was the warring between two major uh, bits of the Muslim faith. With Great Britain's withdrawal from the um, EU, it's worrisome that the peace between Catholics and Protestants so hard won in Northern Ireland may come un unraveled. And today in this country, the ideological divides between Christians has never been greater. Even Roman Catholic bishops are engaging in culture wars with one of their own. All of this, despite the clear message in black and white, on the big screen, in Ephesians, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He has broken down the dividing wall. That is, what's the dividing wall? That's the hostility between us. That's the brokenness among us. So, if the hostility is broken down in Jesus Christ, why all our warring madness? Why do you have to stop a Major League Baseball game because of gunshots? Why do we work so hard to build up walls in opposition to the will of God and the work of Jesus Christ? Now, scholars don't all agree but the general consensus is that this letter to the Ephesians was written about 90 years after the birth of Jesus Christ. But even well before that, people were advocating for peace and for unity. There's an ancient Greek philosopher who wrote around the time of Jesus' birth that, quote, human society could no longer afford to be divided. So, 2,100 years ago, human society could no longer afford to be divided. Yet look at the divides in society today. The stakes are higher than ever because our interdependence is so evident. It is so undeniable. Now, roughly 100 years ago, idealists claimed that World War I was the war to end all wars. 
but religious wars and street violence and racial hatred continue. So why do we fail to grasp the incredible truth of God's new creation in Jesus Christ? And why do we fail to seize this gift of peace that is offered to us? I've always been puzzled or mystified or confused or all of the above about our collective seeming preference to fight about stuff, to disagree, to malign, to argue, to find fault, instead of seeing the good and working for solutions and seeking harmony. Time after time, I don't know if it's our stubbornness or our pride or simply our fallen state as human beings, but time after time we disrupt this reconciliation that has been won for us in Jesus Christ. You know, his teachings are not just for Sunday mornings. The Apostle Paul writes, Jesus Christ is our peace. He creates in himself one new humanity in place of two and reconciles both groups to God in one body. Jesus Christ came to overcome the differences that divide us. When we truly step into life in Christ, all of our perspectives are changed. How we live is changed. We are made brothers and sisters with one another in a way that surpasses the superficial. Differences are celebrated. Accents, skin tones, political leanings, all of our God-given diversity comes together to make a beautiful work of art. Differences point to God's abundance God's creativity, God's imagination, rather than being causes to divide. All of us share a deep need for grace. Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection are ultimate expressions of grace. And in Jesus Christ, we are all given kinship with God. We are all welcomed into the family of God and given the privilege of calling God Father. Since such is the case, how can we work to exclude someone? Since such is the case, on what basis can we erect barriers, barriers that our Lord has come to break down? During World War II, there were some soldiers in France who were mourning the loss of one of their buddies. He'd been killed in battle, and they brought his body to a French cemetery for burial. The cemetery was located adjacent to a, a Roman Catholic church, and there was a priest there, and he told the soldiers that it was a Catholic cemetery. And he asked if their friend had been baptized Roman Catholic. They confessed that they didn't know. The priest was nice. He apologized. He expressed his regret. But he told him he couldn't permit this young man's burial in the church cemetery. So the soldiers sadly and solemnly walked a short distance away and they buried their friend just outside the fence that was around the church cemetery. And the next day, these same soldiers came back and they brought a couple other people from their unit. They came back to stand by the grave to remember their friend, but they couldn't find it. 
They knew that they had buried him just six feet from the fence of the cemetery, but there was no fresh dug dirt. And they were confused, and they turned to leave, and the same priest saw him. The same priest saw him, and he came out to talk to him, and he told him that he had a confession to make. He told him that all the previous night he'd been troubled, that all the previous night his refusal to allow these young men to bury their friend in the churchyard had roiled his mind and disturbed his spirit. He told him that it weighed on him so heavily that he'd gotten up early that morning and he'd gone out and he moved the cemetery fence. The fresh dug grave of the young soldier was now included with the rest. You see, in the love of God, there are no boundaries. In the love of God, we are all united with one another. The priest rearranged a, a human rule so that it would be in accord with the order of God. In Jesus Christ, God has rearranged the assumed order. God deconstructs all dividing walls and constructs the household of God so that it includes everyone. Friends, as baptized children, we are to tear down barriers. We are called to build up the body of Christ not tear one another apart. Surely one reason fewer Americans want to identify as church members these days is because of the way they see us Christians sparring with one another. How can we claim Christ himself as our cornerstone when we do not see everyone as a crucial part of the whole? How can the holy habitation of God have structural integrity when we cannot support and lean on one another. The table before us this morning is God's invitation to come. It's God's invitation to put aside any grudges that separate us from one another and to find strength and a peace that is beyond our understanding. Remember, we are to be a holy habitation of God. Structural integrity requires that none of us be distant from another. Even a little kid knows that one Lego block must connect to another. This morning's passage makes clear our calling to be one. How can we achieve unity? In the mercy of God, unity ultimately is the Lord's doing, but God gives us all a crucial role to play. We must check ourselves and do everything we can to cooperate and to acknowledge our mutual dependence. Remember that need we all have for grace. We as a church are called to be in solidarity with one another and with all others, those outside the churchyard fence. And friends, this unity brings peace. Jesus Christ has broken down the dividing wall of hostility between us. Therefore, let's live that way. Let's love and support one another and build up Christ's body and model God's kingdom. In the spirit, we are one. We are one in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, let us now affirm our faith 
using the ancient and familiar words of the Apostles' Creed, and let us stand in body or in spirit to say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, spread before us this morning is the Lord's table. This is not the Lord's, this is not a Presbyterian table, this is the Lord's table. And it is a privilege and a joy on his behalf to invite all to come from north and south and east and west, all to come to gather at this table and know the oneness that is possible only through our Lord. Christ extends the invitation to come and be fed.
And friends, go out into the world in peace. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the weak. Uphold the poor. Love and serve the Lord and the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those whom you love, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Yeah.